This is Tech Addicts. This week, there's a bunch of new things from Motorola, pictures of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, what's Ripple or Solly, Facebook to be broken up, a solid handheld gaming PC, and Ted wants to get his hands on a monster blaster. Hello and welcome to the Tech Alex podcast. I'm Gareth Miles and this is Ted Salmon. Hello everyone, greetings to you from North Wales, where we enter a let's do the weather report, shall we? Where we enter a period of pre-summer, where it's getting warmer but cold at night, uh, downpours and uh, easterly winds, blah blah blah, etc. And take an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's not usually like snow in February and things around here. Yeah, there's no snow here. I don't think we'll ever see snow again in this country. Global, yeah. well, unless unless it's in the form of an iceberg floating by. Ooh, that would be... Well, yes, I suppose uh, that, that's going to happen. A more regular opportunity for that to happen um, with, with warmer waters and, and the the lack of the warmer swell coming up. Never mind. Anyway, yes, um, yes we're, we're into the Tech Addicts podcast where we talk about tech, not quite weather. And yeah. uh, apologies to those who noticed, but last week I somehow managed to hit mute on the headlines that we talked about in the last show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it was bizarre. It was brought to my attention by a, a strapping young lad whose name I've forgotten. <clears throat> but someone Our listener. What, was it our listener? <laughs> it was our listener. We'll just call him Ralph. Um, <laughs> yes, Ralph uh, pointed out, or, or if it was you, um, you can change your name by Deepool to Ralph. I'll put the forums in the show notes. <laughs> Uh, and that'll help us out greatly. Um, but also, uh, well, I, he didn't mention whether or not I managed to leave in Chad Dixon's entry at the, the start of the, the podcast that said, this is Tech Addicts. Uh, if you want to do that yourself, do hit me up and fire me over a WAV or a uh, MP3 to uh, say this is Tech Addicts in whatever way you like, just for a bit of fun. You could be good on history as a contributor to the Tech Addicts podcast, because we all know this is going to be live on in infamy. Isn't it? Indeed. Yeah. It's going to be sent out in spaceships to new civilizations, boldly going where no man has gone before. For all we know, it already has. Could yes, be broadcasting indeed. off out there. Because we did go out in some radio channels. I remember in Romania, we were going out in the radio. Mm. Uh, it was part of digital lifestyle or something like that. Very exciting. Good wow. job you keep an eye on these things. No, I just I, I see the odd email coming in <laughs> and go, mm, that sounds not on board. <laughs> okay, well, we do have a bit of feedback, Ted, and it's oh. from Mr. Chris Bates, who says, oh. Hi, Ted, this is specifically for you. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to say I really appreciate this thread, this feed, sorry, uh, great news aggregation. I don't emoji or comment much, so I thought I would better say it somewhere. I do see it all. Thumb, thumb, thumb. So um, that's that's big thanks to you over on the MeWe group for uh, your continual and uh, dedicated contribution Rel to the Tech Addicts. Relentless, <laughs> I think the word is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Plugging away. It, yeah, the Me. If you're not a part of the MeWe group, come and join us, please. Link in the show notes to that and um, get involved in the conversation. I do aggregate news. Chris is quite right, and I do appreciate your feedback, Chris, because quite often I I look down across the week um, as we approach our recordings on Tech Addicts, and I realise that um, very few people have commented on any of the links that I put in there, which is okay. That's fine. I I enjoy doing it, and it feels, to be honest, I'm unemployed, so it feels a bit like a part-time job doing all that MeWe stuff. Um, so I don't expect everyone to kind of um, stroke the back of my head and say, well done, here you are, <laughs> here you are Ted, have a nice apple. Um, I, but but um, yeah, I, I quite enjoy doing it, and it gives us a feed for the shows as we go along, and it's okay. But if you want to join in those conversations, please do, and head across to the MeWe group. And of course, we absolutely look forward to anything that you do write, and we can feature it in the show as well, and have a debate or a chat about those utterings that you have uttered. Talking of which, yes, utter, uttering of which, uttering of which. No, that doesn't quite work, does it? 
No. Uh, well, we'll just move straight in and forget about <laughs> it ever happening. Uh, the first headline that we have to go with today is the fact that ASUS have announced the PN64 Mini PC and the PN52 Mini PC as well. The former is an Intel Alder Lake processor based mini PC and the latter the 52 is the Ryzen 5000 H APU not the 6000 processor but the 5000 in there which which to be honest should be speedy enough uh, these are pretty good looking little mini PCs for you to put wherever you need um, they have uh, all kinds of nice features in them like an M.2 2280 slot for NVMe's SSDs and there's a 2.5 inch SATA HD or SSD bay as well. Uh, there's no Thunderbolt connection, which is a bit of a bummer, but uh, it does have two USB Type C 3.2 Gen 2 ports, three USB A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and two HDMI 2.0 video out ports. There's an audio jack and a 2.5 gigabit per second jack uh, for your Ethernet, uh, which is kind of a nice combination uh it's it's not stellar it could have benefited from that thunderbolt to make it a be all and end all uh, but then you could say that as well about the ryzen version as well where you could have the 6000 to make it even better still uh ted any idea of the pricing of these little doohickeys um 350 to 400 quid by the looks mm. of it no 300 to 400 quid by the looks of it depending on your configuration and which one you're um, heading towards um, my my thought about these things is that you remember that I've got that little um, what's it called B Link, mm -hmm. and and it sits in a drawer now, not being used because I've got laptops. But I was thinking to myself, this these things make really good little media servers, don't they? And, yeah. Um, I, I should I should utilise mine really. I should instead of having my Plex talking to my main computer. Um, and using up my you know resources in that all the time, I could have my little B Link box just sat under the telly somewhere and set it up, get it going. The only downside is that you you need to constantly power it, but that's not a real big issue. Um, and you could actually do some fancy audio stuff with it probably as well. Um, I don't utilise my B Link um, um, well enough, but yes, if you wanted to have a little box PC for whatever reason then these um, Asus ones look as though they're just the ticket. Much you know, better power than my little B-Link. And um, hopefully the, the fans are more efficient too because my little one is a little bit noisy um, with the fan going. Uh, in fact, w you, you know that because we tried to podcast with it and it was really interfering with the sound. So, mm. um, yeah. I, what, what sort of use do you think that people have for them apart from that? Well, I, I do think Plex is. Some might even say that this is the specs here are sort of overkill for Plex. Uh, yeah. But the i7 and the the Ryzen 5000 should should chomp through transcoding uh, quite easily whenever it's required. And uh, that's one of the reasons why you should keep it on a beefier system in case something does crop up where you're using it on a device or or sending it out for synchronizing to a device that doesn't quite support the format that it's in originally. Um, but yeah, uh, you could always run uh, Windows <laughs> Media Center Edition. You could get that and <laughs> install it. Because um, I think I think two people have installed that in its lifetime. You could be the third. But uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or you could stick on retro consoles. You could get a bit of emulation going as well there and have a full games console under there. I think uh, Nintendo 64 and Sega Dreamcast are, would run quite smoothly on this. You might even be able to push it up to original Xbox and PlayStation 2 perhaps I don't know do you think, it's been a while do you think people take them with them because one of the things one of the reasons I originally got my B link was that I was I was working between two locations and I thought right all I need is a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse at both locations and I just take it with me and that's my PC and my bag and it fitted in my bag really cutely and nicely um, do you think that that's I'm the only person that ever did that, or do you think people might take them to work and whatever and just plug them in hot desking? Yeah, I think they probably end up using a, a laptop more so for that. This yeah. may require a few more cables and dedicated power and things like that, whereas a laptop can work off a battery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you could have one of these at either end. Mm. No, no, that wouldn't. No, no, um, no, <laughs> that, that would defeat the object, wouldn't it? It would yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, they are good-looking devices, and uh, I hope these sorts of things become 
better than the TV boxes that we have under the 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 TVs at the moment, and, and a lot more powerful and a lot more competent to do things. Mm-hmm. So Motorola have a couple of new announcements, and the first one is the Moto Tab G70. It has been fully specialized over on GSM Arena. And Ted, is there anything that's that's grabbing you by the short and curlies and going, "Hey, look at this"? No, not really. It, no. It's not that exciting. The, I, w- I was c- comparing it as I do these days because I've got the Nokia T20 with the Nokia T20. And, and I suppose it might be a little bit unfair. Um, link in the show notes to the direct comparison in GSM Arena um, f- for the specs on the two. And and the, the Motorola is like nearly double the price of the the Nokia, but actually in some ways it's not as well specified. Um, You could argue that it's got a better chipset. Well, you you wouldn't need to argue. It has got a better chipset. (laughs) But actually the the, the Nokia works absolutely fine. Um, I think that the... um, the, the screen sizes are pretty much the same. The, the PPI is the same on that. Um, it, they've both got uh, um, expandable storage um, and right. internal storage as well. They um, have both got stereo speakers, although the Motorola is saying four stereo speakers. But I think the sound, um, I don't know if you've tested this yourself on, on the one you've got there, but I think the sound is amazing on the Nokia T20. They've really done something with that Ozo, I think, and made the certainly the the, the stereo sound stage really wide um, so the, the the bottom line I think here is that the Moto Tab G70 which I think was originally um, um, put out there for the, 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 the developing markets and not, not so much the West um, is um, not as well specified or, or not as attractive as a purchase for nearly double the price of the Nokia T20 but I'm sure that some people will like it for the um, improved chipset yeah you gotta you gotta wonder why Motorola are really bothering to put out something just so meh you know tablets are Android tablets are, are really sort of a, a niche product and both ends of the market are quite well covered and to put out something that doesn't really feature anything particularly fabulous that's going to really yell out look at me look at me um you um it, it's it's just going to fall on deaf ears really i i don't get this i really don't there's nothing here that would make you go oh I want that over this and it's probably going to cost a wee bit more than the nokia or even the samsung galaxy a eight yeah yeah isn't it yeah yeah, the A series anyway. The, mm. I, I think it's about everyone jumping on this bandwagon. They they see Android twelve L being developed by by Google and they, they just all want in on it. And and as usual with Motorola, they throw everything out there and then abandon it in no time at all. But this is part of the throwing everything out there and saying, We're in this game as well. We want to be in there and if Android 12 L takes off big time and the whole world is using tablets again under Android then we're in there as well yeah yeah having having a quick look um, at some of the comments on on the specifications to see if anyone has an insight into it uh, some people are suggesting that it's going to cost around about 380 euro yeah which is quite expensive and uh, it's the same specs as the Lenovo tab p11. Uh, although it's got the Snapdragon 662, which is going to be faster than the MediaTek Helio 690T. Um, I thought it was the um, 85, the Helio G um, 90T. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, did you? Sorry. <laughs> um, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that I'm looking at the spec sheet, a different spec sheet to you. Um, and, yeah, you're quite right. It's It's almost twice the price of the Nokia, as I said. And you've got to, I agree with you, you've got to ask yourself why. In actual fact, offering, being offered these two devices, I would rather have the Nokia, even though it's slightly less specified. Um, it's got a bigger battery, and it's much cheaper. And yeah. the build quality is really good on the Nokia as well. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure what Motorola are doing, really. And also it's got the three years of updates, whereas Motorola... Yeah. Can't three uh, minutes. <laughs> yeah, if, if they promise that, I've got a funny feeling we'll be noting that their pants might have rapidly increased in temperature and could be <laughs> flaming around the bottom. Um, also, uh, my son using the T20, he has a TV in his room with a Roku connected, and he uses the T20 
for all of his media consumption. That TV hasn't been turned on since Christmas. Right. Yeah. Which is, I think that's that's high praise as well. It, it's, I think it's a 32-inch TV, and he's quite happy to sit there with this. And he's just got everything going on it. It's turned into his real kind of daily driver of, of everything that he needs to use in one place. And yeah. I quite like that. It's kind of a, it's a, a it ticks all the boxes for him. I was, I was working that out last week. Is If you have a tablet for your media consumption, and we'll come to the Samsung um, bigger tablets later, but um, if you put it in the right position in front of you, it's as big as a TV anyway, in yeah. terms of physics. If you if you take the actual <laughs> line of, you know... So, well, actually, this tablet... In terms of physics. <laughs> Father Ted physics. Close up... This, this Far tablet. away. Yeah, yeah, this is perspective. Um, this tablet sat on a table quite close to me. It's bigger than the telly across the room. So yeah. why not? Good for your son. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's quite And the, the sound as well. Maybe the sound is better on the, the tablet than the TV is actually across the room. It's really good. Right. You you should listen to it. Have a, have a listen to the, the stereo, the, the, the sound stage. It's really, really impressive. Yeah, yeah. But then I, I do have the, the S... 7 plus so uh, the sound stage on that is tour de force I believe uh, a journalist would call it right yeah Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, Motorola have also reportedly uh, wor uh, work, or they're, they're working on a, a flagship with a new 200 megapixel camera, a Snapdragon Gen 8, and a 144 watt charger. Good grief, Ted. What is going on there? Um... Yeah, it's not actually a hundred and forty-four watt charger. It's a it's a it's a one hundred and twenty-five charger. They they've headlined this to say uh, that if you take into account the wireless charging speed and all that, then it all adds up to one hundred and forty-four. That's a very it's a just, naughty headline, that isn't it? Yeah, add them together, or maybe it's the one hundred and forty-four hertz OLED display they meant to put in there instead of charging. Yeah, 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 probably. Um, but yeah, this is a, a yet another Motorola on the back of the X30, which is the, the, the global version of what they're doing with the, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Um, although there is a suggestion in, in this bunch of leaks that this might actually have, be having the um, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Mm. The 8, 8 Gen 1 is yesterday's news. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they're, they're calling it the Frontier. That's the the code name for it, and it's just it's just all leaks. But it looks like it might be an interesting device to keep an eye on. Eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, or 12 gigs of RAM and 256. No micro SD expansion, but it's got that Samsung 200 megapixel um, sensor on board, the SK5HP1, which we're all familiar with. Um, and um, yeah, move aside the X30. This is something new and big, and the next stage along, which again, no doubt, they'll support for about three weeks before abandoning. And, and also, they'll put in the the, be the newest version of Motorola's Red E4, and uh, abandon all hardware that had Red E4 beforehand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The 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 two devices you've got to get for that at the moment are the. Um, Edge 20 Pro, and this there's also the Edge 30 Pro coming along, so that's going to usurp the Edge 20 Pro, obviously, um, and the G200. Now, I, I can't find the G200 anywhere. In, in the UK, the G100 still seems to be selling. I'm not sure where the G200 is, um, whether it's in America or in India or something, but that's the other device that makes full use of the whole suite of the Ready 4. My Edge Plus doesn't. All I can do is um, HDMI out by cable, um, and it doesn't talk to a Windows computer. But, yeah... And Motorola are just naughty. They just keep, they keep um, end of you know we we think that Google are bad at um, at um, sunsetting stuff. Well, you know, Lenovo Roller are are worse, I think. And also their naming conventions are just far too ridiculous. I I I wouldn't buy a Motorola because I don't know what I would getting be getting. You have to do big research on it you can't just walk into a mobile phone shop and say i'll have that one you've got to look into them because they're yeah uh, far too crazy and they don't look very different looking across their range um they they do keep things fairly similar at least whenever you're buying a new samsung you can look at the back of the camera array and go oh 
now that's different. And yeah. you know where you stand. Although we had a discussion with um, Juan Carlos Bagnell on PSE last night, who mm-hmm. who was making the argument for don't worry about OS updates. The the important bit here is security updates. And to be fair, um, Motorola with my Edge Plus have kept security updates going. Um, all right, they're, they're not every month as as fast as some people are, like particularly Samsung now and Pixels, obviously. But they are coming and they're they're there and they do ongoingly support those so if you keep an eye on that rather than the 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 actual os updates then you might be a bit more satisfied um but uh, yeah have a listen to the to last night's show for more on that one all right okay uh, oh, just on on the back of uh, motorola what can yeah. you tell us about the moto g stylus it looks well, like that, an interesting piece th- well, this this is the an, uh, an American thing. Which um, the, the, do you remember the the, the stylus? Um, now, in in the rest of the world, it was called the Moto G Pro, um, and that was a stylus device which came out a couple of years ago. And I got I bought one because it was really well priced, and it had a stylus in a silo, and it also ran um, Android One, and it was brilliant, really good device. Um, got abandoned pretty quickly, of course, um, but then the next stage. Of of that was to reduce to, to to produce the G stylus as they call it, not the G Pro, um, which was very similar, but it wasn't Android One, and they pushed it out to the American market. And this is the update of that. So they're calling the this the uh, the stylus um, twen- uh, t- uh, 2022 version. And there's actually not a huge amount of um, core information about this. There's a G87 um, chipset, which is not a Snapdragon, whereas my G Pro did have a Snapdragon chipset. I think it was mm. the, um, from memory, I think it was the 4, sorry, the 662 or 665 or something. I can't remember. Um, but... Uh, yeah, the, the 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 headline here, of course, um, without running through all the specs, is is the stylus, and it's a dumb stylus. Now there is talk about the um, G, sorry, not the G, the um, the Edge Thirty Pro running with a um, a, a smart stylus, and that there's there's talk about Motorola developing a Samsung like stylus that runs on Bluetooth and actually is clever and does lots of other stuff like the Samsung styluses do or did the s the s pen um and that but that's not pertaining to this stylus to 2022 device that's more to do with that edge 30 plus i think from mm-hmm. memory so yeah I, I, again lots and lots of stuff going on with motorola they, they must never sleep at motorola they're, they're just awake <laughs> all the time just thinking of new things to launch <laughs> yeah yeah they've got to have a release thing every week or they won't make their profits possibly mm-hmm. yes uh well there, there has been news actually regarding the samsung galaxy tab s8 series and uh, there's a bunch of images that were uh dropped out onto i think it was twitter um regarding the the, the actual size of them where they have the tablets all three of them against rulers uh, so you can get a, a basic idea of how large these things are going to be in your hand. And the, the regular Samsung Galaxy S8 measures in at around 25 centimeters by 16 centimeters, which is, I, th- I think, it, it, it's somewhat of a an encourageable size, maybe, for a, a larger tablet. That, that would be the... That's in the 9.8 inch by 6.3 inches uh, kind of... Uh, ballpark but the uh, the tab s8 plus is 28 centimeters by 18 centimeters i i'm i'm putting my fingers in the air to sort of indicate like a, a 30 centimeter ruler you can't see that but i'm thinking it might help you in some way and then <laughs> unbelievably the 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 tab s8 ultra is 32 centimeters by 21 centimeters yay that's insane I, I really fancy that big one. I, th- I think that, that if I was going to get a tablet to media consume like your son does, um, and use it as your primary media consumption device, I think that twelve point six inch device would be just brilliant you'd be able to put it a little bit further away from yourself, and it would be even more like a telly across the room. I like it. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I think of this from the point of view of the bag that you stow it in. Um, I had a very comfortable uh, camera bag that I used with my bits and pieces. I would take it in to work with me. I'd put lunch in it as well because it was 
it had uh, you know padding and things like that. It was uh, environmentalized. Uh, so it was a wee bit waterproof and I could put a pack of sandwiches in and a couple of uh, Kit Kats and a banana and an apple and a packet of crisps and then have my ca my tablet, my S6, in behind that and it would all be very nice. It was a good camera bag, that. And then I got the S8 Plus, uh, or S7 Plus, sorry, and uh, it didn't fit in that bag, so I had to go and get another bag. And now it fits nice and snugly inside this other camera bag that I have that um, has, has pockets and pouches. Um, so... If I was to get the Ultra again, I'd have to get another bag because this wouldn't fit in the S7 Plus bag. So it, it's that big that it, it actually requires you to change quite a few things in your life if you were to try and continue to stay with Samsung's top-end tablet. And I think the, the difference between the S8 Plus and the S8 Ultra is big enough that people are going to want the S8 Ultra just purely out of greed. I, I stand included <laughs> in that. Um, and, and it would appear Ted too. But uh, I, I, I don't think I could settle for the S8 Plus because I'd be sitting there using it thinking, there's something better out there than this. Yeah. Yeah. I th I, 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 you're talking about taking it with you, of course. I, I'm talking about using it as a media server, like your son does. And it, it doesn't leave the, the room you're using it in. And um, uh, but you can you but you can move it from sofa to chair to bed to wherever you you are around the house. You're talking about like taking it to work and and, and making it work for you in in different locations with a keyboard and a case and a and a Bluetooth mouse and you know making it a roving solution. Yeah. Um, so we're just coming at it different from different angles. But then if you've got if you're going to spend twelve hundred pounds on a bit of hardware in order to do that around the house, then you be, there's there's other better options for you. We discussed one slightly earlier in the show made by Asus. You could get four of them for the price of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you could have one in every room, so you don't even need to... Oh, wait, that defeats a purpose again, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yes. That's, it's... I, I don't know. I, I, I want to say I'm not going to get it. It's too big. But then I don't want to have to come on the show and say... I bought it. I'm stupid. <laughs> it's possible I may. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I, I always fancied those 13-inch Android tablets. I never got one. Um, Lenovo made them a few years ago. 13-inch tablets, and I mm. and at the time, the place I was living in, it really would have suited my media consumption, and um, would have meant that I could just use it for all of my watching. And but it was always too expensive, and I never got one. Um, and that Samsung approach is that size. I quite like the idea of a big Android tablet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember having in for review, um, I think it was Asus made it, one of the, the all-in-one PCs that they tried putting out with Android on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a big 28-inch screen running Android, <laughs> I don't know, 4 or something. Um, and it was a big touch screen as well. It, it was really good fun. I've even thought about trying to get another one to see if I could shoehorn a later version of Android onto it. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was nice to have that, to be able to have Android that way. I suppose Android TV boxes sort of do that as well. You can have whatever screen size you want with Android mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. All right. Um, Oppo Pad has been benchmarked, and it's got the Snapdragon 870 inside it with 6 gigabytes of RAM, and it has a pretty amazing score um, of, well, the single core is 4,582. Uh, whereas the multi-core is twelve thousand two hundred and fifty-nine, mm. and that, that's that's uh, that's kind of speedy, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, it is. We spoke about the forthcoming Oppo Pad a while ago, and it looks like they're going to just do it right, and they're going to price it right, and they're going to sell these. Um, and it, yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> that's a good strategy for yeah. a company. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, you're right. They, it looks like a, a speedy tablet that's no Nokia T20s, a, a Snapdragon 870. Okay, it's not an 888 or Plus or uh, the next generation's um, chipset, but it's going to be really fast. 11-inch screen, 120 hertz refresh rate, 
Um, 256 gigabytes of storage. No doubt there'll be no expandable storage, but okay. And a big battery. And um, I, I don't know. I, the, the, the best thing that Oppo do, it seems, is to, to make good things, not the absolute best things, but good things, and price them really well. A bit like Xiaomi and, and um, Realme and all the rest of it. Um, and I, I, I'm guessing they're going to do the same with this. I, I quite like the look of this. So do I, um, but then you do have that one hurdle to get over, and that is uh, the 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 rather heavy uh, Android uh, overlay um, color OS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, if if you like it, you like it, but um, having to adopt it uh, purely for the tablet side of things is well, I don't know. Um, it, it's good enough on the phone, but I, I don't know that I'd want to spend all my time trying to learn how to use it on the tablet when you still got, you know, say touch whiz on your, not touch whiz, but uh, one UI on, on your phone and, and, you know, having to deal with the two very different interfaces and how to, to <laughs> cast, how to do certain things, um, which are buried in settings menus. Nova launcher. Like Nova launcher is the answer to all of those things. It, and, it can be, but yeah. at the same time, I, I, that, I, I don't think that's a solution that really needs... It, you could just go back to basic Pixel. It would be nice to have the Pixel tablet so that you can buy a Pixel and a Pixel tablet and then have naked over Android doing what it does best. Yeah, but but they're all doing this, I think. Even the Nokia um, T20 tablet, which we keep mentioning, we should get we should get sponsored. <laughs> I think um, even that's got that whole thing on the left, and and they they they. Um, but it's naked. not as intrusive. You can find settings no, if no, you no, want no, to yeah. find settings. This you can't. But uh, Leanna or my wife has come to me with the Color OS device and said, "How do I do this?" And I've had to go in going, "Right, where would it be on my phone?" That doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah because yeah. it's very different. Like a lot of these things, though, if you had this and you kept it and you were two years down the line with it, you would know where stuff was. You would, you, you know, it's a question. I mean, if I picked up an iPhone, I wouldn't know where to start looking for stuff. Uh -huh. And the same is true of Samsung to a large degree. I've got a, a Samsung S10 here and I updated it the other day to Android 12 and One UI 4. And I had to think again, right, where's... Where's that setting? Where's software updates? I had to I had to look at where the um, where it was telling me that the um, Google Play system update um, month was, as opposed to the um, security update. And I had to fish around to find that. And it's I think it's the same with any any system. Yeah. Um, if you've got a layer over the top of Android, then they're just going to do it differently. And to some degree, they want to they want to trap you into their system. They do, yeah, and I suppose Samsung has done that with me, where both my phone and my tablet are relatively simple. They're similar. They're not exactly because um, I think my my phone's a wee bit behind uh, the the S seven plus. There's things I've gone to look for that they aren't where I would expect them to be on my phone or tablet. Um, but going from you know having a, a, a Samsung phone and this would be. A bit of a headache for most people, I'd imagine. Anyway, yeah, jump, jumping yeah. between systems, I, I, do, I do get what you're saying, and um, it, it can be awkward. It, what's it, what will be interesting to see is what happens with 12L. So as um, 12L rolls out to um, landscape and Google start to develop it, what are Oppo going to do with it? What are Nokia going to do with it? What are Samsung going to do with it? You know, how's that going to develop? That's what will be interesting to see, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it could be worse. You could have bought yourself a real me pad uh, about four <laughs> months ago, whenever it first came out, and be hoping for Android 12, because it's not going to be coming, which is a wee bit upsetting. Why? That's, ter that's terrible, isn't it? Real me launched this pad, for, I, this this little Android pad, four months ago. You know, we talk about Motorola being bad at this. Lenovo Roller abandoned where. But look at this, Realme Pad, no Android 12. There's no mention about um, um, software, uh, sorry, uh, security updates in this article, but you've got to hope that they'll at least do that. But that, that's just terrible, isn't it? I do believe it's something to do with the Helio G80 chipset being uh, somewhat dated, and uh, right. it might not actually support Android 12 
or have limited support for Android 12. Okay. But uh, yeah, um, uh, hopefully people haven't shelled out too much money for this and uh, they'll be able to, I don't know, get um, Cyanogen mod. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> or um, Oppo color or something else. Um, I I don't know. There, there might be a, um, a a lineage build. I wouldn't I wouldn't hold my breath though. But, no. um, I think you've got to hope that it would be cheap enough for people to just have bought it and don't care about updating it, and they'll just use it as long as it's usable. And it probably will be usable for years to come. Um, if you don't like us tech nerds, worry about updates all the time. Well, whenever I first saw this, we were talking about this, I was trying to work out, have we discussed this tablet in the past at all? Or, or, or I, I think I think we did a um, coming scene on it, yeah. Uh, right. The, yeah, along with the Oppo pad, the Realme pad, and we, we talk about all pads coming. <laughs> we like tablets, don't we? <laughs> we do, absolutely. Um, if you bought one of these on the basis of us being excited about it, we apologise, I suppose. Yes. Gareth uh, will refund you. <laughs> Four months ago, that's incredible. That's that's good. I wonder if that's a new record. Let me see if it's uh, um, available to, to buy. You can buy one from eBay at two hundred and twenty-eight quid. Mm. Um, what about retail mainstream? I don't see it for sale anywhere mainstream. Yeah. Um, that doesn't bode well again for Android tablets, where you just think they're crapping them out just to make a, a quick buck just before Christmas, and uh, then abandon them. No, that's right. But it certainly looks like it's going to be a, it's a two hundred pound job. Very bad, naughty, naughty Oppo, or rather real me. Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh, one thing that we actually missed out of CES 2022, and uh, it was something that I remember watching the unveiling of getting really quite excited about and then forgot to talk about on the actual show, uh, was the Aya Neo Next. The this Aya what? Aya Neo. Mm. A-Y-A-N-E-O. Next. This is a handheld gaming PC that is not dissimilar to the likes of the Stream Deck and looks a lot more like the Nintendo Switch uh, than... Uh, the Nintendo Switch Stream or not the 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 Stream Deck, Steam Deck. That's the one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this costs around about thirteen hundred dollars. No, don't get too excited. Don't start going. Oh, flipping heck! I'm not talking about that. No flipping way. Flipping heck! I'm not talking about that. No way. Uh, this uh, this this does feature the Zen Three Ryzen fifty eight hundred U, two terabytes of storage. Ted, that would even satisfy you. Yay! Well, uh, no, and, uh, I'd rather have four. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> and uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. There are customizable joysticks, magnetic hall sensors, and uh, they, that should eliminate drift issues, which I notice people have been talking about on PlayStation 5 controllers recently. Mm. It has a Wi-Fi 6E, which I notice Mr. Litchfield has been talking about recently. Um, and uh, it should be compatible with, with Steam and a large amount of uh, AAA games. Uh, it's a really nice looking device, and I and Neo are really becoming one of the big names in these portable gaming consoles um, by by making Steam into an actual portable gaming store. Ted, what are Neo? Yeah. Is that, it must be Japanese, is it? I are, I are Neo. Oops, <laughs> that's, that was a bit racist, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, don't don't be doing that. No, um, sorry, sorry, Japanese people. What uh, we have discussed some of their devices before, um, but uh, what, what do you think of this? Would you would you have one of these, or would uh, you just prefer to have your real me pad with PUBG on it? I'm 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 not sure about. If I understand this right, we're talking about a um, a Steam Deck Nintendo um, Light um, Switch Light size. No. And Device. It's more Nintendo Switch as opposed to Switch Lite. It runs uh, right. Windows. Uh, uh, was it eleven or ten? Or it, it has some version of uh, Windows on there uh, that allows you to access the Steam Store and probably the GOG Store and things like that. All PC gaming clients. You get you a keyboard. Download. Well, you could hook up a, a keyboard if you want. There's a USB Type C port on it, and right. there might be. I think there's Bluetooth as well. Are people really going to... My, 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 my question that I was coming to, really, was are people really going to use this as their PC? I get, I get it for gaming, 
and if you're a gamer on the move um on the bus wherever you are it's in your pocket and you can whip it out and play a game fair enough but then you want to do some desktop publishing or you want to do some serious kind of and this is your only pc and you've got to do everything on it i i just don't maybe i'm just the wrong age perhaps young kids this this will be this is what they'll do i don't know well, there's there's a bit of a hole whenever it comes to PC gamers because they have to game on their PC, which is at home, so they can't take it with them, uh, which is a, a gap in the medium. Uh, you may have, like I, I've said a number of times, I have about 1,800 games in my Steam account, and uh, I play about four of them. But those <laughs> other ones I could take with me, I could play on the bus, rather than going out and buying myself a Nintendo Switch if I want to do a bit of gaming on the go. Uh, or buy myself a laptop and then having, you know, to try and work out which one to, to to run on the laptop or, as I have done, the Chromebook and try to work out how to get Steam running on it and which games run quite well on it. So having a bit of dedicated hardware like this, if you're really into your PC gaming, uh, this will allow you that. Admittedly, a bit of a limited quality uh, because there, there's things like it's it's capped to 30 frames per second, which is a bit of a, a worrying thing. You can get between two and six hours of gaming out of it. So I'm guessing something, the AAA titles will get about two hours and then something like Undertale will probably get six hours. Um, and so it, it, it does for the train ride if you really need to, to get your, your gaming going. But... Where people have but, invested but a large amount of money. Why, why a PC as well, though? Why, why is why is it a fully? Why isn't it just a handheld handheld games console? Because everyone's going to have a phone in their pocket anyway, as well, to do anything that they need to do um, in terms of mobile, social media, and photographing, and blah blah blah. This can't be your only device. It, because gotta, you look, the gaming stores are only available on PC. You, you can shoehorn them on to other things um, like Chromebooks and and I suppose you can get them onto your 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 phone if you have the know-how and the dedication to get it running. But um, the Steam client is PC only. Well, okay. Linux as well. There is a version of that, but the whole of, um, the, the gaming library isn't available on Linux, only PC. So if you want to do that on the move, you've got to have a PC of sorts. Yes. And and this is that. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, the the Steam Deck is going to be using Linux, and uh, they're developing a newer version of the Steam client to run on Linux, which is what most people are waiting for. But it's not here yet. So if you want to go buy something today or tomorrow and go out, jump on the train, and be able to play. Uh, thinking of a PC only title, uh, uh, Counter Strike, Strike Go, uh, CS Go, on the go, uh, you have to have something like this. You can't easily do it um, on on other hardware. Right. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> and yeah, there's yeah, two yeah. terabytes there, so you've got I, loads I, of storage. I'm, ju I'm just trying to picture someone trying to use it as their PC as well, and going in there and trying to do some, you know, some word processing or or, or even emailing, and that would just be such a fiddle compared to other solutions. But yeah, if yeah. it's just for gaming, then fair enough. It, it's not quite a laptop. I imagine if anyone's using email, they'll, they'll go for a laptop because it has a a keyboard and mouse this doesn't Indeed. it has, has a touch screen and windows 11 has quite a good touch interface compared to everything microsoft has done before um it's still not stellar but uh, it's enough to be able to get this up and running i'm, I'm quite oh. excited about it i would have one if i and neo want to send me one just to just so that i can i can resolve your fears uh then then far <laughs> away <laughs> yes Okay, so uh, one thing that would get you excited is the Monster Blaster 3.0. Yay! <laughs> what is a Monster Blaster? A Monster Blaster is a portable audio device. I say portable. We've, we've spoken about big um, 
portable audio devices before where, you, where they're on wheels and you've got to <laughs> drag them along by a suitcase. Luggable. This is, is Yeah, luggable. <laughs> this is not that size, but it, but it is quite impressive sounding by the 120 watts of power it's pumping out, a 60 watt dual stereo speaker dedicated bass woofer and blah de blah de blah <laughs> it's got an equalizer feature built in to make it um, sound how you want it to sound in different places it's got a 12 hour battery life um, with a, a 12 5200 um, milliamp hour battery um, so yeah I, again this is for someone else really it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna, costing three hundred and ninety nine dollars um, and it should be coming to the UK pretty soon on a, a UK price. But um, it just looks like a lot of fun if you're the right kind of demographic. The you know on the um, on the the photograph on the the, the, the feature from the company, they've um, they've stuck a picture of a you know a young guy with a tracksuit on and st sat in a kind of in, uh, urban area of um, you know just going getting down on the street and being a bit like we the, they used to do in the 80s with ghetto blasters you know get and it was down on the street <laughs> with the kids is that right the kids on the and street get who blaster yeah okay Pe people people a quarter of my age <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it looks it looks a lot of fun, and it looks it looks pretty big. But it sounds like it's going to be really beefy in terms of output, so you can really annoy everyone around you. Fancy one? Um, well, I, you, you did leave out that it, it has a handle, uh, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is always useful, especially for luggables. Um, does it come with that matching red tracksuit that the gentleman is wearing? <laughs> it comes in three colours. There's a red one and a black one, and a a what's the other color i'm sure there was three where is it i can't Transparent. find it Transparent. i don't know um, i don't see a third color red, mentioned blue uh, red, yeah. rust proof it's rust proof as well um <laughs> anyway um I can't yes it has ipx4 water resistance so oh black and white and vibrant red there you go vibrant red oh not just red yeah. good good at least they they clarified that yeah the red the red one's the most attractive of course for those it is. kids down on the street. But why didn't they give a, a, f a funky adjective to the black and the white one? You could have had milky white. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could have done. Or Obsidian bla black. Blaster black. Blaster black. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. Okay, well, uh, moving into scary territory is uh, Ripple. Ripple Solly has been explained by uh, Martin, Martin yeah. over on is it the Friday checkout or uh, Tech Alter uh, you state, um, and I had a I had a, a watch of this and and it does sound like pretty interesting technology, but I foresee a few concerns about it. So this this is essentially um, see if I can remember the terminology that he used. Uh, it's a sort of short range kind of radar type thing that uh, can detect what you're doing and hand gestures and those sorts of things so you can interact with stuff uh, without actually having to touch buttons That's and about it, it. yeah and it, it can it can detect what things are without actually seeing it but from the sound and weight and that kind of thing from it which is a, a bit weird T uh, do, do you want to try and articulated a little better than what I just did. I think the um the, the news here is that we 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 know that Solly was done with the um the the, the um, Pixel 4 and the 4XL and Google were playing about with it and it's now been changed it's been developed into an API and that's the news that anyone can work with this and Martin was saying that that's alongside the likes of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and in actual fact the Ripple um logo he says looks very much like a Bluetooth logo. Mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to get manufacturers and people to develop this as an API and, and build it into other stuff. So uh, in practice, if you watch the video, it's only three minutes long. So click through on the show notes and you'll see it. Um, 
and it's all about hand motions and changing volumes of stuff by um by 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 squeezing your fingers together in the air in front of the the the, the solly in front of the, the so so you're creating ripples in the air and to to change things and to control things and it's one of the examples they use in the video there is um someone driving for example you don't have to touch anything and um to turn the volume down for something you just kind of use your fingers and and make a gesture motion in the air that is picked up by the radar by the solly and and it and it it, it um it, it develops the, the um it, it changes the whatever it is that you're giving a gesture for but i think the news here really is that it's they've made it into an api and and they're hoping that other manufacturers um will develop it and build it into their stuff and in five years time no doubt um you know the the, the whole pixel 4 experiment will um come to light and and the ripple will be the 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 trade name if you like um associated with the technology looks very interesting i think and it's worth having a look at the three minutes of the video just to have a more in-depth look at um some of the applications that are being suggested yeah well that, that, that was the first thing that caught me about it was what happens if say for example the the evil governments were to decide to put some of these out in public could they essentially detect that ted salmon has gone down to the shop he's gone down to tesco and he's come back heavily laden with stuff because they they show some uh, some video of uh, there's like a, a scaly type thing or the, the they, they put a tray on it or a cup and they pour water into it and it's able to detect that that is water that's being poured into it mm. so it, it can actually tell a great deal of about what is happening in the environment that it's set to measure yeah. a lot more than maybe you might expect from the from what Google has put into the pixels in the past yeah uh, but i think it is all short um you know it, it's it's stuff in front of you i don't i don't think it's designed to work mm. over um huge distances um they've got cameras to do that and all sorts of other things to do that with um every section every part of the world is now covered by um big brother watching you in other ways so i don't think the the governments will be too worried about this i think this is more about what's in front of you controlling devices short throw things um throw short um device sort uh pick up um areas yeah. um and, yeah. and and not 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 walking down the shops so that's something else but it's something that they always expand, you know, if you have a look at, uh, say, um, but Wi-Fi, they're always looking to, to push that further so it, it reaches farther, so it can mm -hmm. do this and do that. Bluetooth as well. Bluetooth is not as uh, limited as it used to be when they first started yeah, yeah, doing yeah. Bluetooth. Yeah. So Ripple version 5, whenever it arrives, could be <laughs> something that measures the entire of Ireland. Yeah, indeed. And that will know if you've been to the shops and what you bought. Yeah, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. So it's it's technology to fear. Indeed. <laughs> and it's also pretty exciting, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Cara Pure makes fresh drinking water from air. So I'm guessing, right, uh, we have uh, 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 oxygen and hydrogen, and then whenever you combine them together, you get water. Isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> Before we go into this, I will say that somebody in the group, I think it might have been Ian Watson, I can't quite remember, when I posted this story said, hang on a minute, this rings a bell. They did this a few years ago and it was debunked as false and didn't work and it was a load of claptrap and it was all dropped. So bear that in mind when you're looking at this. So maybe it's a bit tongue in cheek. Although Cara Pure think that it's a, a serious thing because they've put it on um, uh, uh, um, 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 what's Indiegogo. it called? Indiegogo. Indiegogo, and are encouraging early bird pledges and all the rest of it, and they're obviously um, investing in it. Um, so the the idea is that what they're saying is that that in the atmosphere there's water all the time, and it this machine that you stick in your environment um it takes out the water that's in the atmosphere and turns it into drinkable water somehow chemically um and it's um 
it's to do with the filtration and the blah blah. Read the article, for goodness sake. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I, do, do I look like a chemist and a um, uh, an engineer? No, I don't. Well, the, the thing that strikes me about this is that it's got to have something inside it that is toppable, upable, to be able to add the appropriate amount of hydrogen and oxygen together. Uh, if it can't get it, otherwise it'll run out of water. If you took this and stuck it in the Gobi Desert, that means it would be able to create its own oasis, and they should mass produce it on on scale and and put uh, I don't know points across the Sahara, so that people can, you know, get to these. You could take one with you, and trek across. I suppose obviously you're going to need a power source, solar. Uh, so th this would end all concerns about. Uh, water in arid areas of Earth. Instead, you can buy one of these and stick it in your office. Yeah, I think that's the key, is that this is for confined spaces where people are living, and so the breathing of people in and out all the time and stuff. What What's in the air in a, in a closed office won't be the same as what's in the air if you stand in the middle of the desert. But if you put an office in the middle of the desert, then, yeah, the same would apply. <laughs> yeah, but then you think about the fact that whenever you pass wind, there are little fragments <laughs> of, of uh, rear-endy guff that comes out and that this would need filters and things that, to be able to extract your um, nastiness from your your wind that you've passed. So it would need filters and all that kind of stuff and yeah. maintenance and, and things. So how does this work? Do, uh, well, no, I, I, I call this yeah. as crap. This is, this yeah. is nonsense. Again. Okay. Well, maybe the person who commented on it is right, and this is a lot of rubbish. But... It, it, it apparently is on Indiegogo. It's it's attracting um, it's attracting um, support, and if this is a big con, then they're doing very well out of it. They they've so far reached um, three hundred and twenty four thousand pounds. So they're they're really going to be conning a lot of people if this is a if this is a con. Yeah, and th if this is in my office, I'm certainly not drinking from it. No way. I've smelt that guy. <laughs> yeah. After he has a couple of bojums for lunch and or, or you know uh, burritos and things like that, <laughs> if he goes for a pint on a Friday, oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> All right, um, as I hinted earlier, uh, Mr. Steve Litchfield has written an article about uh, Wi-Fi six E and uh, and and what to expect from it as it comes. Uh, Ted, did you have a read through this? I did, and I tried to follow it. Um, phys <laughs> physicist um, Steve has um, pulled this information together in a very efficient way and I was trying to get to the bottom line on this and the bottom line seems to be that unless you're a gamer and can make the use of that kind of gaming um, extra connectivity and power and um, are really pushing it then for the average person who's just using their phone and their tablet and whatever it'll have no impact at all it is a version of um wi-fi 6 um and aside from the frequency used steve says the wi-fi 6e uses essentially the same tricks as wi-fi 6 to get higher um throughput and higher efficiency delivering data simultaneously to eight devices rather than having to take it in turns servicing connected devices as with Wi-Fi 4 and before. Um, plus, um, TWT, target wake time, introduced in Wi-Fi 6, introduced battery savings for all connected devices um, by communicating key wake and sleep times. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a step up from Wi-Fi 6, but it's not... Um, it's not Wi-Fi seven. This is this is a a, mm -hmm. a, a move forward in, in in a number of ways, as I understand it. Is that how as you understood it? It is, yeah. And it was a bit strange that as almost as I was finishing reading that article, I actually got an email from Netgear saying introducing Netgear Game Booster. Attention gamers, coming soon to your Orbi system router uh, is the new Game Booster service. Uh, that'll allow you to prioritize your favorite games and apps to run uh, or to free up your bandwidth and optimize your gameplay and block ads and that kind of thing. So it, I just figured, yeah, that must be uh, uh, Neck. You're saying, yeah, you bought an Orbi system, so you're going to get 
Wi-Fi 6E because that was my original concern uh, was people who have shelled out a decent amount of money for these Wi-Fi 6 um, solutions uh, may not have the support from their manufacturer and they could use the opportunity to try and sell you a bigger, better Wi-Fi 6E solution as opposed to a 6. But it would appear that at least Netgear, uh, if you have an Orbi, um, will be will be keeping you up to date with it. That's excellent. Mm. And it'll have the, the 6 gigahertz frequency for those devices that use it, which means Stadia will run nice-like. Very nice indeed. I'm, I hope you're very, very happy together. <laughs> my, talking of which, my Stadia has been sold to um, Gareth. I think I mentioned that last week. Um, I did have to give up, give up on it in the end. And that whole bandwidth thing, I, I think we said on the last show, is just very limiting for people that are not on the kind of connections that you've got. I, I think it's a shame because I qu would quite like to... Um, continue to try with that but I just feel as though I'm I can't and it's just gone so uh, you know why f these kind of speeds are really for people that have got um, like you got a, a, a proper um, domestic style broadband which is uh, as I said last week I think which is odd because they're trying to push the whole gaming thing out to mobiles and accepting that people are out and about and they they do want to game on the go and use their phones mobile gaming um, and uh, this has moved rather away from the Wi-Fi 6E thing but um, the, the point is that uh, they need to do something about it yeah, I'm actually starting. I was thinking there about poor Gareth Williams. He's probably got all these stadiums knocking around the house. It's like, oh, I wish I had never told Ted that I I'll buy them off him. Um, he's got he's TV had, with four controllers. I think he's had three off me, and he did actually say this time, "This is it. This is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it again." <laughs> Flip. Well, yeah, I guess Gareth's house is a, a fun place to go on a Friday night with the boys. Yeah. Or the girls, yeah. the, the, the people, the gaming lovers. Yes, indeed. Did I recover from that? I'm not going to get cancelled, am I? <laughs> not yet, anyway. Okay, so um, moving into Flap Your Trap about an app, uh, somewhere where I could get cancelled if I make any more derogatory remarks about um, that moron, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, darn, I go again. Oh, uh, the FTC uh, are, are moving to uh, make a bid to make Meta, or what used to be Facebook, sell some of its uh, uh, social media tools that it has acquired over the last number of years. So Meta is, is essentially Facebook, but they also own Instagram and WhatsApp. And a judge has ruled that the FTC can go ahead and and try to break up uh, Meta's uh, whole uh, conglomeration that they, that they are because uh, they have a monopoly on social networking, which is uh, it's a bit of a result. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say that it's... I actually think this is a wee bit unfair because... Yeah, I agree <laughs> with you. Uh, Facebook... WhatsApp and Instagram are three very different things. Mm -hmm. And they, they, you know, you, you can see, yes, okay, uh, there is a messenger inside of Facebook and inside Instagram and then WhatsApp. So they, they do share some of the same services, but th that's not, that shouldn't be made illegal. Uh, that's not a, a um, that's not a, a monopoly on messaging because they've got three different messaging clients. If anything, it's it's really quite annoying because it would be nice if all three of them had the same messaging client. Um, but it, it's it's an interesting story to follow, um, and I just I like the idea of well, actually, someone trying to police what Meta is attempting to do because it makes you feel that there is someone out there watching. Uh, what's happening here, even though it, it, doing things quite early may end up in a result that could end us that could end up harming us later on. You know, what if they were to sell it to another part of an umbrella corporation, that sort of thing? Um, you know, um, and what it could bring for other smaller companies that are trying to to purchase other things um, uh, for to achieve a complete goal. What was your takeaway, Ted? 
I've got mixed feelings, really, because on a personal level, um, if WhatsApp was not under the Facebook umbrella or Meta umbrella, mm. um, I would actually leap in there. All the people I know pretty much use WhatsApp, and the only reason I don't want to use it is because it's part of Facebook, and I do object to Facebook having my data. I'm happy to, for Google to have my data um, because I consider that that's the way I've gone. I've, I've leapt into bed with Google, and that's it. I'm not going to share all my data with everyone else as well. But if WhatsApp was a separate item, like Signal is, for example, I don't object to using Signal or um, what's the other one that was banding around? recently um, telegram telegram yeah so I, I don't mind those standalone services and, I, and i'll go ahead with those so if whatsapp wasn't part of facebook then i would be up for that and i would join immediately and i would use it on the other hand why is it that you're quite right if you build a business someone is then to say to you, you 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 can't have these things you you form a, a monopoly and it's not fair and you've got to break it up you know and, and also why is the same thing not being said to alphabet for example why yeah. is it meta that's getting it alphabet have got all sorts of services f um feeding out from uh, google particularly services and all the rest of it why, who's to say that they couldn't be forced to sell off Gmail or sell off Messenger or sell off um, chat or whatever else? It, you know, that they're happily going along doing the same thing. So I, I think that this will be just overturned. They'll, they'll just appeal it. And it was uh, some judge or panel has decided this when they, it's been an off day. They wanted to get down the beach and they'll change their minds. <laughs> on the beach it's january ted <laughs> you monster um no you're quite right uh look at using google as a as an example you know they've got their chat their duo uh they, they've always tried to have some sort of social network going on that that unfortunately has failed but had it taken off and google were to start having people move into their realm in their droves as as facebook did have um not did have, but had uh, for a while. I think people are, I don't know what the, the ratio is, if more people are still joining or if more people are still leaving. I don't know what it is there. But um, uh, Google could have ended up with, with some kind of difficult quandary that they would have to go over as to whether or not they, they break it up. And perhaps the way that they've set up Alphabet is uh, is to avoid having to do that if they were to suddenly become flavor of the month. Microsoft is the same thing. Uh, yeah, the amount yeah. of people who are on Teams now, for, primarily for business-based stuff, but uh, people are starting to use it outside of that as well. And, and it is picking up. It's certainly not as, as popular as WhatsApp, that's for sure. And I, I, I think it'll be a while before it ever becomes to be uh, as popular. But uh, if, if Facebook was to sell off WhatsApp, which I really hope that's the first thing they have to do, if, if one thing comes out of this and that it is the sale of WhatsApp, yeah. then I'll be back on board and I'll be able to say hello to people again. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting one to watch in the news as, as it goes along. But it, this is one judge's ruling. And, you know, they're going to be throwing so much money at defending this and appealing it that I, I, I don't think this is, this is the end of it. I think there'll be different outcomes. No, no. And, and also, uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, is, uh, is the man behind this all. It's not that it, it really is sort of like a team of shareholders and things. It's it's one person's vision. And he may have a team of underlings underneath him, but it, it's it's almost like a dictatorship mm -hmm. where he, he wants this and he can do this. And whenever you actually boil it down, he probably has any private pictures that you have on your phone in his own special store somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to throw that out. If, if your, your daughter or son have maybe taking a picture of something, um, he probably has a copy of it. Mm -mm. Yeah. Nice thought. I don't trust him. Every time I look at his brown doll's eyes, I'd like to do the Robert Shaw thing of from Jaws whenever you describe his eyes, like a doll's eyes. Um, that, that, that's what I think of. Um, he just... Uh, he gives me the heebie-jeebies. Mm. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, moving on to uh, AP News uh, covered uh, that Grand Theft Auto makers are buying the Farmville company.
for $12.7 billion. This is Zenga. That's probably a name that people haven't heard in a while. Uh, but if you remember on Facebook, there was Farmville. They also ran Words with Friends, which oh, I... Oh, yeah, I remember that. I, <laughs> I googled that to remind myself <laughs> what it looked like. And the first thing that came up was a story about Alec Baldwin, about how he was ch- he was kicked off a flight for refusing to put his iPad away because he was playing Words <laughs> with Friends with mm-hmm. a friend. Wasn't that that's uh, a, a Scrabble thing, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I didn't realize they were still a thing, but they, they must be. Um, but uh, yeah, um, ah, what was it Rockstar is is purchasing them or Take Two Interactive is purchasing them uh, to bring them in under their 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 umbrella. Uh, for what, just those two remember. games. Well, I think that's their their two most famous games. I'm not okay. sure what else they've they've right. they've per- uh, produced. I'll I'll have a quick look while you fill them in with other stuff. I don't know anything about this. I, this is all to do with your um, gaming world and not mine. But th- that's a humongous amount of money, isn't it? $12.7 billion. Um, now, the Americans consider billions probably differently to we do in the UK. But even so, it's a considerable amount of money. And Grand Theft Auto uh, is the the big one, I suppose. I, I'm trying to think of something that you could liken it to um whilst also waffling while you get around to <laughs> looking up whatever you're looking up killing time i'm not sure how well i'm doing this and having spoken about killing time now probably was the best way in which i could have killed the time between you going off to not kill time and be productive and me sitting here sitting here um, not being productive um and killing time and then trying to talk about this item which i've got no idea about that's a very nice um Zynga building, and I like that bulldog, which is the icon of. Have you have you got there yet? Uh, no, I've, I've, I've stopped and I was listening to you. You were enthralling there for a second. I'll start looking. Do you want to do one, Robin? <laughs> no, they've um they they produced Farmville three. Apparently, yeah. there was a Farmville two. I would like to think uh, Harry Potter puzzles and smell spells, not smells. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Game of Thrones Slots Casino Which sounds so appropriate A casino based Game yeah. of Thrones game Words with Friends 2 Zanga Poker CSR 2 I've, I've, heard, I've heard of that I've never played it That's a that's a, a, a drag racing game Or something like that mm-hmm. And um, I, I can't pronounce that Merge Dragons I think it is I can't really tell the the font, the font that they wrote the logo in is crap, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, they've they've done a bunch of games. Golf Rival is another one. Um, so how can they? How are they hoping to monetize this? They they're talking here in this article about making them all mobile. So so the ones that are not mobile versions, making them into mobile versions. Do you think that's how they're going to monetize it by making them yeah. popular on phones? Well, uh, I think Zanga are just they their ad shovelware titles um, that have uh, maybe some imminent purchases of of gems or that sort of thing, uh, with uh, ri- a ridiculously addictive approach to them. Right. Um, and I, we we all know that because Farmville was something that made it into media back in the day, whenever it was really popular. But having a look at their entire games list, uh, one, two, three, four, five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 15 times 50, Ted, off the top of your head. 15 uh, times 50 is for no. 750. 15 times 50? 750. No, 15 times 5. Sorry. Oh, 75. <laughs> 75. So they, they've got maybe about 75 games listed on here. I don't recognise really any of them other than Farmville. Um, but they, they just must be chucking these out and making an absolute mint right. and take two want a piece of that mm-hmm. they, they also have two large licenses that they produce games for Game of Thrones and Harry Potter so maybe it's to get that as well mm. yeah. Yeah. how the other uh, half live eh? with uh, 12.7 billion pound to throw around Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm, I wonder if they had to go to the bank for a loan, or if they were just able to throw that money out of their pockets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, the YouTube rich list has been announced, <laughs> and 
Uh, at the top of it is the highest paid star, which is Mr. Beast. Mr. I Beast. <laughs> haven't heard of him before, have you? I have. The, the reason I put this in here was that, uh, as an example of how the other, uh, how everyone else in the world seems to live, because there's a top ten um, listed on this um, BBC article, and I haven't <laughs> visited any one of them. And the top ten um, 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 uh, monetizers of YouTube, I have no idea who any of them are, what they do. Never looked at them, and. Um, I guess that people of your son's age will probably know who all ten of them are. So it was just interesting, really, how the world's moved on. And these people are just making an absolute fortune out of YouTubing. But from what we've seen of it, people also work really hard to do it. So, um, you know, we, we, we look at these guys that do these film... Sorry, these... Um, mobile phone reviews for example and the ones that do them well I mean of course there are lots of them that don't do it well but the ones that do them well and are making a fortune they they, they clearly work really really hard and this guy mm. that's at the top of it Mr Beast he when you read some of the things that he's been doing to amuse his visitors well it, it sounds like he probably deserves to get all that money because uh, you know a lot of risky activities and things that are going to um, think you, you think to yourself, good grief! What on earth is this? It's all to do with pranks. Last year, he recreated elements of Netflix hit Squid Game on his channel. He played hide and seek in an eighty thousand stadium um, uh, seater stadium, and was buried underground. I ca no money in the world would get me to go be buried underground. <laughs> and you know, so when you start to to dig beneath it, this is not. Influencer. This is not people, you know, um, girlies showing off makeup on 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 TikTok. This is actually people that are going out and doing serious stuff and and working hard for their money. So, I, to some degree, you think, well, good luck to them. Yeah, no, it, it, it is the amount of work that some people have to put into it. But I think whenever you start making the amount of money that Mr. Beast has, then you have a top team of people and you have headquarters yeah. and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Maybe he just needs to come up with ideas and then he can dispatch his team to set it up. I'd like to think that it gets easier um, to allow the creative process to flow for the likes of Mr. Beast. Um, having a look down, I do recognise some of the names. Uh, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. Um, Jake's at number two and Logan's at number nine. If you remember, Logan Paul was the, the chap who went into the suicide forest in Japan and filmed some of the bodies. No. Uh, and and no, okay. Um, and there was uh, Ryan Kaji, who is a child, and his parents filmed an awful lot of stuff. My son watched his channel a lot. I've forgotten what it's called. Ryan's something or other. Ryan's World. I guess right. that's what it's called. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's crazy to think that some of the people that you imagine might actually be on this list aren't on this list. Uh, Given the amount of views and things, I, I over Christmas there I got into your man Colin Fursey, I think his name is. He's the guy who built the bunker in his back garden. Um, he's a he, he just he soups up his house, and they're fascinating videos to watch. He's just he's got my sense of humor. Uh, he's kind of a bit childish, a bit uh, a bit. Um, brass or brash I suppose would be the one um so I, you know I, I just I get his sense of humor very well and he's into the same kind of music I'm be into so I, I I started enjoying his channel a great deal and and going back and watching through a lot of his stuff and seeing the amount of hits that they're getting and the amount of money that he must be bringing in but crucially I think there's a point where the YouTube channel itself has to be a wee bit humble to the viewer because despite the fact they can be bringing in millions, they they don't seem to invest it all back into things. You know, where, where some of them maybe are looking for a cheaper way of doing something without, you know, dumping a huge amount of cash into making a video. They'll maybe skimp on a few things and that kind of makes it a wee bit more accessible to to the viewer as well. Which I think is an, uh, it's it's actually quite nice to see that happen in a weird way. You're, you're, yes. making, you're making a case for the way you do it, aren't you? Uh, no, well, I, 
I'm, I'm shocked to see that my YouTube channel is not on here as well. With the, the, the 3P that uh, Google throws at me every month. One, um, of, one of these is a seven-year-old Russian girl who started as a toy unboxer. Started as a toy unboxer. Yeah. Now has 90 million subscribers. Um, and she's now moved into vlogs and, and music videos as well. And, you know, someone's taken this seven-year-old Russian girl and has managed her, haven't they? And they, they mm -hmm. said, right, you You've got 90 million subscribers here from opening toys in boxes. Let's cash in on that and make something of it. And, and this is it's just a different way that stars are born. You know, move over CDs and 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 um, people going on tour and singing and stuff. In comes YouTube and the the the, the, the dig, digital kind of revolution where people just do stuff online it's, it, it's quite amazing when you start to to dig into this and there's another one there as well another um toy box reviewer um maybe a lot of this has started from uh, un unboxing toys is it it has yeah and i would say that that's actually it's something that a parent needs to police because the uh, a child can can get bad habits from these and i i noticed that my son uh starting to watch these videos at I think whenever he was six or so um he would whenever he got a new toy he would just tear open the box like uh like he, he couldn't he needed to get into uh, the the contents um because his life depended on it he, he wasn't careful about getting in which he had been before and I think he's seen some of these youtubers who unbox a new toy every different video and uh, you know, to save time, rather than opening it carefully, they they just tear it open. And right. if the toy's broken or you need to send the toy back for whatever reason, there's now no box because it's been ripped open. And there was a <laughs> there was one particular channel he was watching about a series of toys, and the the father kept saying police instead of police, mm -hmm. and my son started pronouncing it. The police. I was like, no, 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 no. Hang on a second, son. You're you're not from L.A. Okay, you can't pronounce it police. <laughs> it's police. And he was like, but I want to get the police car. I'm like, no, it's police. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say it normal. So they're 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 watching a lot of, and the kids just take on so much stuff. So yeah. they're not exactly regulated these channels, and you you have to really be careful on what your child is watching because. The people who have managed to get to the top of YouTube's rich list probably have got there through being quite careless about the way they treat their audience. Right, yeah. That sounds a bit like the whole Australian question intonation, doesn't it? When the whole world started to watch Neighbours and um, what's mm. the other one called? Um, Anyway, the, the, home and away. Yeah, the the Kylie Minogue thing. Suddenly, the whole yeah, there's there's a generation of people who are starting to talk um, in in with questions at the end of their sentences, and <laughs> you know, and 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 that I find personally at nearly sixty years old, I find that really really annoying. But maybe I don't know. Maybe you're a bit younger. Perhaps you're of closer to the generation of people that did that. But that was allegedly just through the spread of television and Australian um, shows that people were picking up on. Yeah. I, I do remember the Beavis and Butthead movie where is it Robert Stack's character is always telling off one of the characters for ending his sentences with a preposition. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he, he has to try and adapt his, his, his statement that he's making so that the preposition is in as at the start and he ends up talking pretty much gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert Stack's like, well said. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you're talking like Yoda, I suppose. <clears throat> well, yes. Uh, yeah, there's a filthy amount of money to be made off uh, YouTube. Uh, but I guess this time next year it'll probably be the TikTok rich list that will yeah, be looking at. Yeah, it probably will be because apparently that's, um, that's now bigger, as we reported on the last show, I think. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I, I just hope that more people that are making money out of it are actually working hard to do it and not just riding on some trend that you know is um you don't you don't mind so much if people work hard like this jake paul is at number two um and he's a boxer and he's a ufc star now if you've ever watched ufc it's just 
Right. You wouldn't want to be in there doing that with anyone. It's no. it, it's a dreadful so-called sport, and you've got to be super fit and work hard and train and you know all of that money he's earning. He's blowing well earning it, I think, by doing that. Um, but yeah, it, what's annoying is that people that just fall on it and don't have to do any work to get their money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, but <laughs> UFC as well, yeah, can all be t all that hard work can be taken away from you in one punch. Yeah, yeah, that, that, mm. that it's just brutal. I remember when I started watching that on um, I can't remember what it was on. It was on Sky, I think, when I had yeah. Sky back in the day, and um, it was just brutal. I couldn't believe what they were doing to each other in this cage. There was no escape. You couldn't get away. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like WWF back in the day, wasn't it? Where the big boss man would fight against uh, Brett the Hitman Hart inside a cage. Was that in a cage? Or is it not a roped ring where you could jump out if you got if you got frightened? <laughs> <laughs> well, they they'd have cages as well, just to up the ante. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, 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 anyway. Moving on to Retro Arch, one of the better. Sorry, uh, Retro Arch, one of the favoured. Uh, emulation um, uh, solutions or uh, platforms that people like to use. I won't say better because that's not fair. Try, uh, try what fits you. I actually use RetroArch. I like it a great deal and it has some nice front ends uh, that, that you can use on, on... I use it on my Android TV box, the NVIDIA Shield, and it works really nicely. But RetroArch is working on some hardware that will allow you to run Nintendo 64 carts on your PC. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting piece of uh, open hardware uh, that, uh, that that they're doing. Um, and it should, as the article uh, over on Nintendo Life describes, it should rival the Polymega, which is a somewhat controversial uh, hardware platform. Uh, that you can go out and purchase that uh, has interchangeable inputs. Uh, that's probably the best way to say it. Uh, Ted, I take it this is something that tickles your fancy. Do you want to get onto the N Nintendo 64 bandwagon? Well, the N64 is the one where I bailed out, really. Um, so the N if they were doing this with SNES, sorry, SNES, <laughs> <laughs> when we had an, an SNES, we always called it SNES, and yet whenever I say it to you, you laugh and you say, no, it's SNES. Anyway, um, if they had that one, I might even have still have some carts kicking about somewhere in a box somewhere. But I never did get an N64. I found that it would moved on too much and it was all too clever for its own good. But the whole principle of being able to do gaming on a PC with carts that you might have in a box somewhere is just fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, it depends very much on how much the thing costs, of course. Um, and if they're going to price themselves out of it, and how it works, you know, is it something you're going to plug in by an HDMI cable into your PC, or if so, can you then just stick it in your telly as well, or is it something that you can download as well, as well, maybe you don't need to have the carts and the modules, you can just download it as well, I, I, I don't know, I, 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 we haven't seen what form it's going to arrive in yet, do we, and I, to be honest, I've never heard of RetroArch, so I'm glad you have. Oh yeah, and no, and you can get it on your phone. Uh, I do recommend uh, you have a go with it and see uh, see how well you do, because you 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 don't need to have ROMs and things like that available. Uh, they 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 package some free stuff inside it, so you can go and uh, get games going yourself inside of RetroArch. There's some some avenues that you can take down there, but um, whenever it comes to actually manufacturing hardware to run original cartridges or mediums that, that, that were out there, CDs and things like that. I, I always, I'm so wary of them because it's not a it's not a question of walking into your attic now or climbing up into your attic and uncovering your treasure trove of old cartridges. Most people have already done that if they do have them because A, you've heard of people making quite a bit of money online. B, uh, you've maybe used them to trade in to get the next uh, version of the console. And uh, and see, eBay prices are so overinflated on so many of these things that if you decide, oh, I want to get GoldenEye and I want to play the original cartridge on my PC, then you're going to end up paying quite a bit more than you might have done a while ago. And this will help keep 
those cartridge prices at an all-time high because there is then a new audience that is trying to find and track down cartridges. It'll also increase bootleg cartridges and, uh, and people ripping people off with maybe broken or dubbed cartridges. There are some cartridges out there that are worth an absolute packet and you'll start to see people dumping them on there. Now, if you, if you, I remember a couple of years ago I collected for the Amstrad GX 4000 and there were cartridges that were uh, dropping onto eBay that were fake cartridges that people had cobbled together and they were just selling to you and if you bought them for an overinflated price you may find out that it's not actually that game at all or it's some kind of... Uh, um, a bootleg that, that someone's created themselves. So you end up getting ripped off. So you have to be very cautious. So RetroArch will be selling a piece of hardware to the collector out there who already has a large collection and probably doesn't play half of them or even a, a, a small amount of them. Or uh, the one lucky sod who's held on to maybe a couple of cartridges or still has come across a couple of cartridges in, in Granny's attic or, or somewhere that they didn't realize that it actually was. Um, I, I don't have high hopes for this. And I, I, I think that we're, we're better off because there is a legal aspect as well that needs to be addressed here as well. If you're trying to play a ROM of a cartridge that you don't own, it's illegal. Mm-hmm. So uh, where RetroArch is is providing a service, they rely on you actually owning the ROM cartridge that you have. And some people, like myself, I've got a pretty good collection of, of cartridges on various different platforms. I can play those games fine. It's a bit of a grey area. I suppose some people could say, no, you can't. But th- th- it's a grey area, though there's an argument for, for each side of it. And then the likes of, because this is Nintendo... Are Nintendo going to step in and say, no, no, you can't manufacture un, uh, uh, non-Nintendo hardware for Nintendo cartridges? So it might end up being a futile pursuit anyway. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to be worried about, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether or not this is an authentic setup or, or not, or if you're better off just getting something like an Evercade. This is th- this article is actually on on Nintendo Life, the website. So you would think mm-hmm. that it probably has some some truth to it. Um, not, I'm not suggesting that Nintendo Life is a official Nintendo um, website, but they obviously are quite popular and they um, have a, a, a big following. So I don't know. It'd yeah, be, be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Well, Nintendo watch very cautiously what's happening with their their library of games because most Nintendo games are have that official guarantee from Nintendo. So they have a vested interest in them mm-hmm. and they can use those to help, uh, uh, you know, prop up the likes of, if you subscribe to the Nintendo uh, yearly online fee, you get a small library of games that you can play uh, from the original Nintendo, the, the Super Nintendo and the, the Game Boy, I think it is. I don't think the end, Nintendo 64 is there. So they may be planning to do something like this, in which case this could affect their sales of online subscriptions. Yeah. yeah. So they could they could just stamp it out. And if you were to buy one, you could find yourself buying a lump of hardware that you can't actually use anymore because yeah. Nintendo have stopped it mm-hmm. somehow. Anyway. Yeah. Very interesting, <laughs> anyway. All right, uh, moving into Harkback territory, where, Ted, you've got a couple of software packages. Yeah, well, one, really, which was the Microsoft front page. Ba- back in the day, I don't know when it was, probably the about 2000, um, I started to have the need to develop web pages. And um, my, my Harkback, really, is that Microsoft front page just did it simply... It was a, a web page builder um, where what you see is what you get, basically. Um, it, it was just simple. It was it was like using a desktop publisher. Yes, okay, you had to understand how pages worked and how they interacted with each other and how you laid them out and how the, the tree structure worked. Fair enough. But that beyond that, there was no further knowledge needed to just use this. What you see is what you get. No n- knowledge about the back end crap or the learning of code or complicated HTML stuff and blah blah blah. Um, 
and it just worked brilliantly well and html page pages were just accessible to ordinary people like me i built our company's website on this i i built um early versions of other stuff i was doing to do with um mobile phones on this um I also did the Valley Diary, which is a, a magazine, a local magazine that I was responsible for being the editor for, and still am, incidentally. Um, and I, it just all worked, and it was all simple, and it was absolutely fine. Then, in about two thousand and three, four, five, um, Microsoft ditched it because, and I'm not saying it was their fault, but because the standards were changing and HTML coding was changing and suddenly Microsoft front page was not good enough. And they, in 2006, they, um, after kind of abandoning Microsoft front page in terms of development in 2003, there was three years where I was still using it and it was fine. They um, they then replaced it with this thing called Expression Web. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing with Expression Web. So, <laughs> but after 2006, um, they start, you, you, it felt as though you needed to go to Blumen College to learn how to do it. And, and I'm sure people listening to this will be saying, oh, it was simple. It's all about cascading style sheets and um, layers and styles and, and SSL this and all that bollocks. And, and to me, it was just, you know... Um, too complicated I, I didn't understand on earth what they were doing and I was sat there thinking to myself what was wrong with front page and it was just so simple and expression web just changed all that and so consequently I just abandoned it and then came along the birth of um, you know um, Wix the likes of Wix and Squarespace and people that were out there actually doing all the learning and seeing how it all worked and turning it into tools which were accessible by the likes of me so, so keeping it basic and, and the, the tools that I still use today I still use Wix because it is to a large degree what you say, see is what you get and it works very much like front page in, in many ways um, back in the day and it wasn't complex I know I could have gone to night school and learned about it and learned how to do it properly but I couldn't be bothered frankly I, I wanted to do it in a simple way um, and when I approached Microsoft about this and, and told them my um, stern words about it, they declared pretty much that if you want to use um, um, Microsoft tools, you can do the same thing with Microsoft Word. You can save Microsoft Word documents as HTML and that that's it. There's your coding done for you. But it was not true. You could not do it in the same way. You, it wasn't a proper what you see is what you get. And some of those tools that were available in front page were not there. They were not desktop publisher tools. Um, so them just saying, yeah, just use Word. It's just as good was not true at all. And um, they they were just kind of sending people off to use um, Dreamweaver and you know expensive Adobe products if they weren't um, happy. Now eventually we got HTML5, of course, and it got even more complicated. And people needed even more in-depth understanding. And you know I, I guess that people were going off training to use it and coding and it it just my heart back was just. Back in those days, it was just so simple and anyone coming from a background of word processing and desktop publishing was able to just use front page in that way and it worked beautifully, worked well and I really wished that they were able in some way to continue with that and make it work um, without me having to go out to the likes of Wix and Squarespace. So there you go. Um, any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, kind of, yeah. I never actually used it myself. Um, I, I am aware of it. Um, and I, I started learning Dreamweaver around about that time. But um, it, it, it just, it, uh, this was pr producing websites that you would see back in the day, back on GeoCities and things like that. Or was it a wee bit more advanced than that? Would they look better? Um, I'm not aware of GeoCities. Oh, wow. Okay, right. Um, well, there's a hark back for another day, actually. Okay. Geo cities. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I remember an episode of The Simpsons where they were doing uh, website design, mm -hmm. of all things, because, you know, that's hilarious. Um, and, <laughs> and Homer Simpson put together his, his website that just had all the little flying toasters and all kinds of just animated GIF crap all yeah. over it. And uh, 
and, and that that was it. He was just, wee, this is all I want, woo. Um, and th that was what the early web was. Would this assist that? Um, and and w w how easy was it for you to make things a little bit more unique? Um, with front page, I felt as though it did all I needed it to do. I could I could make it all happen. And, and you're right, things like um, animated GIFs came along, and they weren't there in those early days. And actually, now, um, in order to keep it um, simple, I don't know if you're aware of a tool called Composer, K-O-M-P-O-Z-E-R, which um, Steve Litchfield put me on to, in, in actual fact. Um, that is a really simple what-you-see-is-what-you-get program, which which works to some degree, like um, Front Page did. It keeps it simple, and they worry about the coding behind the the scenes. Um, so you you can do it simply, and, and Wix does it simply, and some of those tools that you've just been referring to and, and, and alluding to, they are all built into the likes of Wix. Composer is a much more simple... Are you aware of Composer? No, and I'm just looking at it now. Okay. Um, it's, it's just a really simple... Um, tool which does basic um, in fact Steve Litchfield's ba um, web page, his whole three lib thing was built around Composer and that's why he knows how to use it and showed me how to use it. Um, and it and it's really really simple and that's the kind of web building that I felt was just what I wanted and it's fine tedsalmon.com is built on Composer and it's just simple and straightforward. Yes if you want to start adding in um, you know a, rotating cameras and and fancy gif activities and all the other things that fancy if you went to the the nikon homepage where there's just tons of stuff going of course that's you're not going to be able to get that from simple tools like this but i don't want that i just wanted to i just wanted it simple and the front page just made it simple mm, yeah no I, I, i've always loved steve's website it just it reminds me of websites back in the day whenever but before even yeah you're right before dreamweaver or whatever came along mm. uh, whenever you were first sort of trying to do your navigate your way through putting together a website um and how tricky it could be just dare i say frames um that yeah. they were really <laughs> difficult to use and stuff but um yeah I, I, know, I might have a look at that not that i'm going to I, I, I like WordPress. I think it's just simple to the point and very easy to use. Um, and it, it helped revolutionize the internet that way. Maybe people sort of turned off into different tandems. And it does yeah. get um, very, very complicated. And uh, a lot of us got left behind um, in the heyday of the, the, say, the dot-com boom and things like that whenever websites were easy to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, and that's what I remember starting out when it was easy and it was straightforward and it wasn't complicated. Um, but demands are different now, as we've just described. That people, that there's all sorts of ways in which websites work and wh how, what is expected of them. And you know, something like Squarespace, Squarespace does that brilliantly well. You know, you can just go and use their tool and do it. Give them money, of course, but then you've got <laughs> it. You have to give money to Microsoft for front page. Um, True. But anyway, there you go. That was my heart back, and I'm I was sad to see it go in 2003, and eventually, um, I think actually I think you can still use it if you want to, but it's it it's not supported. It's it's you know you can still download it, but it's not in any way supported. So it's very full of holes. A bit like desktop publishing with Microsoft is with um, with Publisher. You know, Publisher mm. is is um, it's still there just about. But they again, they want you to use um, Word. When when I've approached um, Microsoft about Publisher, one of the reasons I approached them was because they didn't include it in the um, in the the Office suite for Mac. Because at the time I had an Apple Mac computer, an iMac, and I couldn't get Publisher on it. And I and I I had this discussion with Microsoft, and I said, Why can't I? And they said, Because we're we're not really developing. Um, publisher now these days and I said well what am I supposed to do them? they said use Word but when you go to Microsoft Word and try to do the same thing and, and desktop publish it's not the same, you don't have the same set of tools, it doesn't work so they, they start these things off and then abandon them and I think that they shuffle you out to go and use other people's tools I think Microsoft said we're not interested in these 
early developer people, just go and use Squarespace, for goodness sake, or go and use <laughs> Wix, or something yeah. simple, you know? Yeah, yeah. Leave us alone. That's yeah. It. We don't want your coin. <laughs> Is not welcome here. All right, uh, where your coin would be welcome is in some of these deals that we have in the bargain basement. Uh, the first one is something that, Ted, I think you covered whenever it first came out or something along the same lines. Uh, this is the Aki Minima 20 watt fast charger type C wall charger thing. It's six pounds and 98 P over on mymemory.co.uk. And uh, there's a there's a picture of it uh, when compared next to a quarter, you know, from American um, uh, money systems, um, a quarter dollar. And uh, this is a tiny little plug. Obviously, it's a bit bigger here in the UK because we have the big three pin uh, plug attached to it. Um, but of course, that improves safety in every way possible because we have a better uh, plug system here than we, they do in the States. But, uh, yeah, this is a, a pretty swish little uh, plug. Uh, only has one USB Type-C on it, but for a 20-watt charging solution, I think uh, this is a, a great thing for whenever you have a phone that doesn't have one in the box. It looks like yeah. the, um, the 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 um, Anchor one, doesn't it? The Anchor mm -hmm. Nano 2, which we spoke about. Oh, um, maybe that's I, what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I think I think that it's just a, a copy of that, really. But it, the the Anchor Nano 2 is nowhere near the price of this. This is six pound ninety eight. Um, or if you buy more of them from this link you've linked to in my memory, you, the price the unit price goes down. Um, it does, and, yeah. yeah, and that that's much cheaper than the Anchor ones on Amazon, absolutely. So, yeah, good little charger. Yeah, I'd say the one thing that you could hold against it is that it only takes one device at any one time, but... Yeah, yeah, but then so do the Anchor Nano ones too. Yeah. It's a simple, tiny little charger that, 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 that gives out more power than its size seems to think it should, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. £6.98, that's really good, isn't it? Yeah. What's that? Right. Um, the this is this is to be filed under. You really needed what you really needed wanted one of the, you really wanted one of these anyway. <laughs> I'll get it out in a minute. You really needed to Excuse buy me? this anyway. <laughs> the Sony Xperia One Mark Three. It's a hundred pound off at the moment on Amazon. Nine hundred ninety-nine quid. You really needed to want one anyway. That was the phrase. Um, right. Or significantly, I think, is that the twelve times 83 quid so they're spreading this for people that this pops up for probably not gareth in northern ireland um 83 yeah. quid a month for 12 months and you know if you, if you wanted to have this flagship device i've got one here at the moment from pr and it really is a stunningly interesting and and different device to your normal android kind of stuff um and it's a, a, a really nice phone that you could buy into for some time but yeah that 12 months of payments is what what attracted me really apart from the 100 pound off yeah uh, well, why, why would you say that this is a a, a top phone at the moment what, what strikes you well it's it's got a nearly um a, an almost kind of vanilla flavor to it of android which is unusual um it's got a 3.5 millimeter audio out socket it's got qi charging um, it's also got lots of camera bells and whistles with the, the Sony um, software that if you're into photography and also you've got a background of using the, the Sony Alpha cameras, then you'll feel right at home. It's it's not all AI like you get with a Pixel phone or, a, or, or an iPhone or, or a Samsung phone. It's, it's user-driven um, um, photography where you can go in and twiddle with all the settings you want to, apart from Aperture, of course, um, and and make photography um, part of your your tool inside this phone. So I think that's the reason. The five Mark III um, is similar, it's but it's smaller and it hasn't got Qi charging. The one Mark III, I think, has got all the bells and whistles, and, I, and I'm really enjoying using it here at the moment. Um, again, we spoke about this on um, PSC last night with Juan Carlos Bagnell, who's also a fan of the Sony gear, um, because it, the five Mark III has just arrived in America. Um, and um, the, we were talking about it last night, so do have a listen to PSC. Has that answered your question? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm quite interested in this phone because I, I, I would like something like that. You know, it's, it's just a bit different. 
as opposed to the old samey samey thing. Yeah. And uh, I'm just seeing what it would be like on a on a good deal from somewhere. I suppose you can get it for thirty quid a month on the O2. Okay. Uh, right. it's, it's, it's a beautifully made phone as well. Um, uh, you know how much I love Sony gear anyway, and it just talks beautifully to other Sony gear, including the the, the as I say the cameras and the whole photography and video um, centric. I mean, to be honest, that's a bit. Wa- the video stuff's wasted on me, but the camera's really good fun to use, and it makes you be able to drill down to, um, you know, tinkering with settings and actually seeing the results of what you're doing on the fly. Um, and it's got a shutter button, of course. A shutter button, the only phone in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder how it ranks on the DX. It was the DX O mark, wasn't it? I wonder if it's in there. I have to have a look after the, the geek, show. On the on the Geekbench Five, it, it's pretty much top of the. Uh, you know, it's up there with the, um, uh, with the the iPhone Twelve Pro Max. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Well, the next one is a little a SanDisk Ultra 128 gigabyte dual USB Type C and USB 3.1 flash drive. Now, I was looking for one of these to uh, use on my my Chromebook. And actually, I, I went into this looking for something in particular that was that was both a flash drive, because years ago I had this, uh, both a flash drive and a micro SD card reader. And I can't for the life of me find that one that I had, and I'm pretty sure it was made by SanDisk, and I thought I'd find this because it was the dual thing. But uh, this has a USB uh, uh, connector that pokes out one side or you can slide it up to the other end and it's got a USB type A that pokes out the other end and you can have 128 gigabytes of storage on the go um, and you can hide both ends if you sort of put the switch in the middle so you can plug it into your phone on the go and then plug it into your desktop or laptop uh, whenever you get home using the other connector as well it's a good way to share some storage but uh, crucially I was looking for one that uh, had micro usb or, or sorry micro sd uh input on it too but this was dropped in price a 128 gigabyte version used to be 52 pounds and 16p now it's 15 pounds wow. i think that was quite a good deal and you can get 128 gigabytes that you can take with you and plug it into whatever you like as long as you're usb type c that's Not quite a, that's a huge saving isn't it it is that's 71 percent off wow. would you have much need for one of these no, not personally, but I could see that um, somebody might well. The, the, the 256 gigabyte version is 41 quid. Is that reduced as well? How much was I think it's down from, it was down from something else. No, nope. oh, it's down from 49.99 to okay. 41 pounds. But the 64 gigabyte version is 14 pounds and 39p, so it's 60p cheaper than the 128 gigabyte version. Go figure. Very, very odd indeed. Yeah, so it it doesn't take an SD card, which is what I was primarily looking for. So I haven't bought it, but I was close to it because I thought I could make use of that, couldn't I? Uh. <laughs> Before we move on, just going back to what you said about the DXO, I, I don't know why my brain was thinking in um, um, uh, in terms of the processor speed, but the DXO Mark thingy. Um, I just had a look at it, the Xperia 1 Mark III, and they're saying, yes, that they, they, they like it. I haven't drilled down to all the data, but um, it's an improvement over the Mark II, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, the DxO answer is probably have a look for yourself if you're serious about wanting one. Yeah, yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to give another plug out for the second week running to the Elgato Stream Deck XL. Um, the reason I'm saying it again is because it's, even cheaper than it was last week. Last week it was forty quid off, forty quid off at one eighty nine. It's now sixty quid off at one six nine, and I'm even more tempted to be honest. I don't need it, but I really would like it. And um, it's got the thirty two buttons on it. This is the XL version, and I really, really want one of these. And I'm by, but if they take another twenty quid off next week, I would have got one. <laughs> Right, okay. I'll buy your old one then. <laughs> okay, dokie. <okay. laughs> For that 20 quid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but because that would be an extra saving again if you were to sell the other one, so it would go down in yeah. price even yeah. more. Yeah, Very I could do good. that. Yeah. 
All right, uh, the next one is the sound disc. I'm sticking with sound disc at the moment because I was trying to sort this out. Um, the sound disc extreme 256 gigabyte micro SD XC memory card. Uh, and this is reduced in price from £43 down to £33. So 256 gigabyte SD card, micro SD card for 33 quid is pretty good. It's a saving of 25%. So the prices are still a tumbling. Yeah. But uh, you, uh, Ted, you can click on there. They, they do the SanDisk Extreme one terabyte micro SD card, and it's only three hundred and eighteen pounds and thirty one p. Yeah, but we've seen those at one hundred and seventy, haven't we? Um, yeah. may, maybe not the SanDisk Extreme, but certainly getting a a class three um, one terabyte um, at m much less than that. That but that two fifty six. Um, gigabyte one is really well priced I think the one mm. that you've you've linked to because it's you know that, that's a lot of memory really isn't it for um, 33 quid uh, that, that's really impressive I think yeah it's a U3 XC V30 yeah good looking card because the, the, if you go to the 400 one it's three times the price um, for the same thing so that 256 is the one to get I think yep yeah, very good Hi. Aye, quite the right. Zoom H6 is next, um, which is something that you had your eye on a while back, and mm -hmm. the, a thing that I use for podcasting all the time. When I bought it, it was 339 quid. Um, we last um, looked at it when it was 289, and it's now 275. So now is probably the time to get one if you were in the market for a digital audio recorder with some flair, which you can plug in um, pretty much whatever you like into it, um, which is a, a super duper device. Um, the H6 All Black. That's the the new the newer one, the All Black one. Nice, nice. It's it's very tempting, but no, not not so close to Christmas. I can't justify it. <laughs> so close to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of it, yeah. Um, over on uh, Amazon, they have reduced the price of the Insta Three Sixty Go Two action camera. This is something we cro we covered on the show quite some time ago, and I was really impressed by this. It really looked like the the videos looked really cool and had some good software in it. Uh, that allowed you to really achieve some pretty impressive action camera shots. Um, it's a wee bit like a GoPro, only smaller, and it comes with a wee th sort of tripody type thing, and it's got um, magnets in it so you can attach it to stuff. Um, it, it's waterproof, water resistant, sorry, and you can you can dump it into places and, uh, and, and be filming. It has some AI inside it in the pro mode that allows you to it sort of crops in and, and can create your video for you on the go, um, which is a bit of a feature that um, I think a lot, an awful lot of vloggers and the like uh, tend to use. Um, they've dropped it in price from £289 down to £249. There's no reason why. Maybe there is an Insta360 Go 3 coming this year. Uh, but I would say the things that really do cause problems with this are the fact that I don't think it takes... Uh, this is a 32 gigabyte version. It doesn't take a micro SD card. Um, it can overheat a little. Um, whenever it's, it's, it's filling up that 32 gigabytes quite quickly and the battery only lasts for about 30 minutes of continuous recording. What? If you 30 manage. minutes? But then it's recording in 4K, so you're not going to get any more than that anyway because you'll run out of storage space can you on not, 32 gigabytes. Can you not switch it down to 1080p or something? Possibly. I can't quite remember. But right. the, I've had one of these on my want list ever since it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, after seeing the debut videos of it, and the they they sent it out with a bunch of um, of uh, influencers and things like that to to put together a few videos themselves, or to film some footage and have the professional software do their own automated videos of the interesting things that happened. And what came back was really impressive uh, footage and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I'm putting it in that wee tripod does allow for a little extra um, uh, battery power and you can, there's a case that you can put it in that can charge it a bit like a, a set of um, ear pods or whatever so you can get extra battery power on the go but it's it's the storage that's your issue here with uh, 32 gigabytes 
I believe there are larger storage options available with it, but uh, not at this price. Right. I do like these. I would want one if I could have one, but 250 quid still a bit steep. Um, hopefully, if they do a three, the two will drop down even more so again. Indeed. I'm being offered £50 times five on that one, incidentally, so oh. other, other people might be as well. Have a look for that. Um, yeah, Chris Kelly uses these. He, he likes motorbiking, and he um, has made use of these um, these kind of devices um, to good effect and posted some of the results in our groups on MeWe. So Terrific. have a look at that. Um, last one is the... Um, uh, it, not a micro SD card, but a, a, a SD card, um, which is made by Lexar, and it's um, one terabyte, same as what we spoke about earlier. But this is the kind of card that you kind of, well, I put into my cameras um, because it's the bigger size one. And also, I've got slots in my laptop for this as well. If you're in the market for something, if you've got devices that will take this, my Zoom recorder, incidentally, is another one that takes that as well. Um, and it's £94.98 today, gone down from 99 quid even. Um, and there's a lot of storage on that for the price. Um, yeah, we all talk about micro SD all the time, but actually there are significant uses for the one ter sorry for, for the SD size as well in lots of mm. devices still. So yeah, good bargain I think. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, DSLR cameras and things that run 4K video and stuff. You need as much as possible. Yeah, and that's a U3 as well. So it's a, a nice fast card. Um, we've spoken about Lexar before, and that's that's a lot of storage for ninety four ninety eight. I think, if you need it in some device or other. Certainly, certainly. I, I was thinking to think of the head unit of a car, uh, where you could have video and stuff like that on it. Uh, I've seen some folks using these or this uh, okay. larger storage that way. Yeah. All right. All right, well, if you want to get in touch with us, you can, because we're hitting two hours now, so we'll bring it to a close. Uh, you can uh, email me at gareth at techaddicts.uk. You can uh, find us on Twitter as well, at techaddictsuk. Um, you can find me on Twitter too, at Gareth Miles, G-A-R-E-T-H-M-Y-L-E-S. And then I have my dot .com as well, which is GarethMiles.com. Ted, do you have a dot .com? I do. It's called TedSalmon.com, built on Composer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, th that's where you'll find links out to everything from me, all the audio podcasts we do, and all the MeWe groups. So head across to there, tedsalmon.com. And if, if you're feeling generous and want to buy me a coffee, you can do that at paypal.me forward slash tedsalmon. Thank you very much. Excellent. And we'll catch you all next week for another round of uh, tasty tech and guff, ga gadgety guff. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Take care now. Bye. Bye.